Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO, the last of Europe, in which we're using the submod for the mod for the mod of TNO. Uh TNO, the community expansion. Now I've played using this mod before, and I've actually done eventually both paths, really. But uh, this mod has been updated for the Silicon Dreams update at the time of this recording for TNO. And apparently there's like new smooth mechanics and stuff like that, so I want to see what it's really like. And this is there's been a couple updates to this submod in particular that uh, I want to see if there's anything really new and different. So we have self-made men, we have uh, disorganized administration, which is not very good, and we're led by Ajaba Isuliani. Isuliani. So if you worry about him, please go ahead. But we gotta talk about the land of crime. <clears throat> the feet of the bandits of Ukraine is a known one in Russia. Two years ago, we escaped from the gulags of Vorkuta, the prison stayed in with Jaba Isuliani as her guide established herself in Ugorsk, mere miles south. An organized criminal community was born, the gangs divided the already poor territory and sustained themselves with the sparings of uh, uh, the local populace. Now, winds of change are blowing in Russia, and the conflict between the old guard and the Stalinists in the League is rekindling, and we must prepare ourselves if we wish to overcome the challenges that fate brings us. The Great Pakan. Despite the difference, different morals of each gang, the Great Pakan Jaba Isuliani. Managed to maintain some resemblance of order in the territory. He's seen as a guiding light by the bandits of Ugra. Despite his popularity with the common thieves, the Pakans are becoming agitated for his lack of action, mostly due to his compliance in the trade deals with his Latals, seen as an infringement of the Vodi Code. In towns, these troubling rumors risk to topple Isiliani from his position of power, and he needs to take action as soon as possible. A drunken lucidity. Well, what are you, Shaddy? Tearing your throat? It's like we're crooks here. You were a puppy. I brought you to the house, saying a loud congregation of drunks as Jabba wobbled past the little bar. You got us night were cold, but the night was exceptionally freezing. Most were drinking with their friends to stay warm, it seemed. Jabba Isuliani, the de facto head of the new frozen state, was himself pissed drunk, walking home from a particularly raucous drinking session at a bar his friends liked. As he walked past the bar and reached the bottomed out remains of an intersection, Jabba started to think. The vodka made him made it feel a bit fuzzy, but standing at a curb elicited a sort of mental mo movement. He never felt with this much alcohol in his system, out of nowhere. His mind was surprisingly clear, methodically going through each and every thought, how the wind felt, how his head kind of hurt, while he was drinking when he was already ahead of a whole booty country. A sudden burst of lucidity hit him square in the nostril, an entire nation of people. <clears throat> people a lot like him. Slightly drunk bandit, but people under supervision. Their little nation state knew and happy and drunk as it was, and needed a leader. It needed food, water, for uh, infrastructure. That was the word, infrastructure. Water, guns, leadership. It needed him, Jabba Isuliani, to stop his stupid drinking and get off his butt. With any motivation, Jabba started walking again. It wasn't easy, although the thinking was clear. His body was still drunker than an Englishman when their football club wins or loses or draws, but it was a bit of swagger, low work, and assistance of the wall. And finally, heart, and finally got to him to his dwelling at the moment. He was living in an old pre-Soviet hotel, currently christened as a Papa Khan palace against his wishes. When he entered, he was quickly grabbed by one of Aslan's Usuyan's secretaries. Sort of his underlings were living here too until they could find suitable housing. Thank you, Landed. I'm fine, but I swear. Jabba eloquently and articulately slurred. No, sir, I don't think you are. Landed rudely interrupted from a new uh, Mario Fusco book he had found earlier, but grudgingly carried the sole ruler of Yugra up the stairs into his bedroom. Isilion is still in his stupor physically, half rustled himself out of an already reluctant hold, waving off his underlings underling, and sat down at his desk as he shifted from the stupor to hangover. Jabba wrote down all the things he wanted, not a long list, and all the things everyone else wanted, a much longer list. His men wanted more vodka, the few people outside of the thief's life, more food. More than food. Everyone wanted guns, trucks, oil, money, and more women. <laughs> Who doesn't want more women? Jabba went to the icebox and threw the vodka in out of the window. There's a lot to do. Oh, and we have 54 political power. Ooh. So what can we do? Well, Yugo's economic situation is a mess. The bandits are able to survive only with Yusilin's smuggling network, a web that covers the entirety of Occidental Russia. With this handy connections, we will be able to survive in the future, find other Russian warlords in the struggle for reunification. We all know the longer the wars are, the more wear down they will be when we pounce on them. Raid valuable caravans. Ooh, more growth. Potentially. Smuggle weapons from Zatos, which is not bad. You might get some really good guns and smuggle civilian weapons. More stability and improved poverty. Well, that's kind of interesting. See. And we can buy some weapons, we can do that, we can oh, get more loot, which we'll probably want to do in all honesty. We need more uh, stuff there. Um, we have a yearly deficit. Growth is not great. Um, so that's not grandiose. Honestly, I might just go with the growth. That's probably one of the best. Even though smuggling civilian weapons would not be bad either. Let's go with the growth first, though. So right now, our growth is currently at 0.692. When removed, 0.692. So we'll see. Saturday night. Adam Bogosin, yo, took another long sip of his drink. Cards in hand. Good vodka was sure hard to come by nowadays, wasn't it? He glanced back down on his cards. 16. Would he take the risk? Adam was never, or Adam, was never much of a risk taker. Or, <clears throat> or coward, coward, coward counter, or that bright in general. Perhaps he'd done better in school, he would have spent would have spent six years in a gulag. He gulped down the last of his beer and looked right in the dealer's eyes. Hit me. The dealer begrudgingly handed him the five of cards. 
Adam's gamble paid off. For him, Blackjack wasn't unlike his life in the mafia, mafia. Every move was a risk, and sometimes it seemed like the best move was not to play at all. But for every chance he had to go over, for every time the house seemed to rig it against him, Aram survived. Aram. Aram. In the Virgin North, there was not just brains or brawn that separated the men from the corpses. It was cunning, and those that were cunning would find themselves rewarded handsomely. Holding the wad of cash in his hand, Aram went back to the bar and grabbed a stool, hoping to celebrate once again, beating the house at their own game with another shot of their best vodka. That was, at least until something cut his eye. Two somethings, actually. So the nicest... He had ever seen. Hey, they're beautiful. Why don't I buy you a drink? Saturday night was about to get very fun. Sometimes crime does pay. Convene the circle. A circle is the closest thing the thief territory has to a government governance structure. <clears throat> the meeting of the territory's pecans and the changes required to quell the religion's bad men to be made, they made it through this meeting. Everyone has their own interests, but no one's foolish enough to uh, choose something that shall make our unified position worse off than they don't wish to have the rest of the pecans on them. The circle's convene. The eyes cast, time is coming to summon the circle. The ray. The trucks rode on down the empty road. The sounds of wheels against ga gravel and snow the only sound that pierced the dead of night. Um, the bandits of Sour were cleaning their weapons, getting ready for the battle that was to come. For too long, the commander thought but that had his bandits' company limited themselves to small scale raids. The sound that performed their biggest heist yet, taking out an entire supply depot of Rokosovsky's third army. A large amount of weapons would surely fetch a handsome price in Yugur's black market. Perhaps Pakan himself might notice him, but Gudish should chuckle to the thought of that the Georgian dude ever noticing anyone but the ladies of the night. The sounds were interrupted by the screeching of brakes. Everyone out! Uh, <clears throat> let's go. Blow the gate let's get the machine gun set up. The soldiers rush out of the trucks, blasting the sh machine guns at the guard posts. Ganesha stepped out of the vehicle, hoping to lead his men to glory. His chains were ended by a single well-placed sniper bullet from a Red Army sniper. The bandits tried to flee back to their trucks, but most were down by machine gun fire from the outpost experienced men. Where there should have been crowds of celebration and pride, Grisha's bandits only found the crowds of pain and death. We must adapt or die. We got no more growth. Uh, we were lied to. The Kurdish spider. Uncle Aslan Osuan looked at himself in the mirror, asserting the creases on his newly smuggled leather jacket. Sir, the bandit mercenary stood impatiently in front of the bespoke wooden desk, the cigarette bur he burst in with, still seeping a thin line of smoke, his dirtied appearance and bloody nose looking out of place in the neat office like room. Aslan turned around, sitting down at his desk, grimacing at the cigarette. What is it? There had been a request from the great pecan, sir. The bandit cleared his sword. It's an ammunition problem. Go on, Usuyan already knew where this was going, but preferred to not jump to the unpleasant conclusion. We're in a skirmish around the Svedlovsk region. It got too big. Too big. The great pecan requests ammo considers your business and status capable to provide both the ammo and transportation. Usuyan already annoyed. Felt his mood plummet. And where would we get the great pecan uh, like that delivery? Now the band took out a cigarette, knocking some ashes off it onto the floor, placing it back between his lips. A tense silence. Usuyan cleanses his jaw. We'll have the ammo in around three hours. I have a local branch there. They should have the surplus transported quickly. Thank you, sir. The bandit turned around, trudging out of the office, and his boots leaving visible dirt on the marks on the floor. Lucian waited for him to leave before sighing and sitting forward, unlocking his fingers, effing animals. Even the strongest web cannot withstand a determined brute. The Wasteland Economy. The Sakshkas, screaming as his comrades had exploded from the sniper of fire, falling backwards, and feeling the burden of stomach acid rise up the back of his throat as he felt the taste of copper in his mouth, blinded by the crimson on his face. Vadim, God, Vadim! His panic shell was cut short with another shot, the spark of his mind going up permanently as half his skull came off with the speed of the flying round, slumping under the new snow, staining it with red. The spider cat would get out of the cover first, followed by Arseni, the two walking under sounds approaching the dead men. First, check his pockets. Looks like an officer. The bandit girl followed through the sniper's orders and would lean down, beginning to rifle through all of Dean's pockets. Anything? Don't like being so far in the open. No, just the usual common threads and crumbs. Some ciggies, though. Catherine would take out an intricate metal cigar case, refurbished for holding crappy pair of paparosa cigarettes and flipping it open, noticing the picture of what looked like an a Cossack and his wife. Her eyes would suddenly stop, admiring it. The redefined, refined deportation of ca cavalry men, the dress of the woman. Screw it. What are you waiting for? Can we sell anything or not? Our Sydney kept his rifle aimed at the woods, turning in circles, waiting for any possible looters to come and take their prey. Yeah, probably Catherine would take the photo out, crumple it, and stick it into the bullet hole in the officer's head, cackling as she stuffed the cigarette case into her pocket. Let's go, another lunch of these losers. And soon the werewolves will start swimming for them. The two would begin walking away as the two bodies begin to freeze in the snow. In order of insanity, nothing is sacred. Uh, okay, we have 1% now. That's not good either. Um, so the next one we might do... I really like this one. You get more stability, which I do like, and you get better poverty. We will probably have to need to do external investments at some point too, because my uh, she's looking a bit tight. She's looking a wee bit tight. You ultimatum from Verkuta Corrective Labor, uh, uh, Corrective Labor Camp. Also, these were originally uh, militia. This division, so yeah, not great. Troubling developments. He's going on, he leaned back in his chair, feet up on the desk, reading the reports on a recent infight with a casino debtor and creditor. His mind filling with a com combination of annoyances, yet at the same time, morbid entertainment. <clears throat> a knock on the door will pull the pecan out of his thoughts. Come in, Isuliani barked, sitting for him, tossing the rifle to the side. 
Uh, Rafael Bagdasarian slipped through the door, his eyes darting around in a nervous manner. Jabba, we have a problem. Oh, look at this. Ah, Raf, my dear so called spy master. Some news. This Yulan is playing these little games of it. So maybe. Uh, Jabba, Rafael would interrupt. It's not only Usian, it's worse. Come on, Raf, what could be worse? Darn it, Jabba, get your crap together for once. The rest of the Pakan circles licking their lips for your position. Rafael's jaw clenched. There's been rumors going around, rumors that you've been losing your grip, that you haven't got the. Raf, stop being such a darn nervous rush and get on with your stupid point across. Isuliani growled, picking him uh, between his teeth, his voice dripping with simmering rage. They think you're weak, Jabba. The force is on the brink of turning against us, and you know how to prove strength. So Raphael left a meaningful pause. Jabba also paused, and then with an exasperated sap, put himself out of the chair. Turn it all, and I was hoping to have more time. Couldn't be in the circle. It seems I can't manage it peacefully now. After all, better stand and die than live and crawl. <coughs> but happy March, my everybody. Uh, review the criminal code or industrial buildup. We do need to build up our industry quite a bit. Give our political power, which actually is probably what we really want, even though we lose all our stability and political power. Uh, the criminal code, the t laws of the thieves, is made up of several important outlines on how the pecans must act in their own factums. The bond being the outline of the share of responsibilities and privileges pecans hold in the hierarchy, and the lays being a protection money and the other forms of tax taken from the general populace, and of, co and of course, the uh, circles of public status for now e neither legally, legally, legally private or public. If we were to expand, we need to hammer out any of the loopholes and discrepancies in the code. Tell maybe. Oh, we can do this. Uh, it's gonna balloon our debt like crazy. Give a little more time. These guys are definitely not ready yet. And of course, we won't back down until easily. They do have some social forces there, though. Oh my god. Deep cuts. What did he say about my mother, you stupid guts posse? Uh, Ayaz hissed. Standing up from his kneeling position next to the bottle of cheap uh, crap beer, he and his mates had decided to share. I call her a whore, a stupid whore, the Koziol. Vanya Scissors gave his brand smile, his hand traveling to his pocket, his weapon of choice in the form of sheep shears resting comfortably in his hand. Vanka, I don't think it's worth it. Dimitri, on the other hand, did not keep anything in his pockets, but as a right-hand man in the small gang of delinquents, he had to be present for what essentially came down to a dick-measuring contest. She ought to just getting interesting. Scissors hissed through his teeth, turning back to Ayaz. So you stupid sheep screwer, what are you going to do about it, or what? Vanya nodded to the side, turning the opposing gang's attention to the rest of the dozen or so other young men, armed, several armed with rusty pipes and broken bottles. Don't got the guts? Oh, really, Ayaz, ah, yes. famous for his rage, bit his tongue, barely containing himself. Really don't want this. The roar, or alarm the rest of the gang, several also standing up, picking up the bricks and bottles. Vanka, stop. Dimitri reflexively took a stance, his hand finding the gas pistol inside of the pocket. You keep crapping yourself, you'll be seeing it for the rest of your life, scissors grin. Let's have go. And a burst followed. The fight was short and ugly, several Russians falling to the ground from the gas round and holding onto their knocked around heads. Same as several Turks, the gang's dispersing when no one had the strength to continue. See? See them that Mika? Uh, Vanya wheezed from exhaustion, looking around for his right hand man. That's the crap. That's a, his tire was disturbed with a pain groan. M Mika? Oh, cut up, Vanka. Oh, I can't stop bleeding. Hey, looks like we're doing okay so far. Beautiful. Yeah, and he's feeding. If you like to put that, please go ahead. We have more stability, political power. What's not to love? War planning. Eh. Growth is where right now. 1.14. Not bad. I don't have any money. Ooh. But the Army of St. George has already been raided. Or is being completely raided. Keep training for now. Bevel Zakharov. 35%, huh? Well, it could be worse. Review the criminal code. Yeah, we would need that extra political power. We absolutely need it. Industrial builder would be good, though. Which we'll probably do that one next. Now, the first time I played through this, I did review the bond. I also did enforce regulations, and which is actually not terrible for us. And time for formalization, which is not bad either, because I like the stability. But we'll go with maintain the thieves' responsibilities, as well as preserve the lace. And, which is pretty good for stability, too. Preserve the circle secrecy, which I do like the one as well. But we'll do, definitely review the code first. We can purchase equipment, but we're not going to. An unexpected summon. Azlan Nusuyan said his beautiful, pristine soul in desk and thought. Since the breakout a few years back, he had mostly sound thought. He thought about his past, his childhood, what little he had of it, his time on the streets, and his time in the gulag. He thought about his present, his gang at Carver a Hunk. Oh, oh, hello. Of Ukraine and Weissen looting what they could, and now we're trying to grow something. If they get their hands on some good potatoes, they could have finally some real fresh food. Could you make naan with potatoes? Finally, he thought about what was to come for the crap, frozen crap hole. It been ages since any kind of meeting had been held. The little circles of thieves and laws they made after the escape had convened once, one time. No one had any idea what the plan was, what to do, what to prepare for, however. Austin knew there was an opportunity in their stagnation. He could take control. All he needed was a little more time to give you the pecan of the pecans. Someone was knocked at the door. Boss, it was Leonid, his secretary. Come in. Laying it into the room, strode with his boss's desk and excitedly handed him a letter. That's from Isiliana. Good news, I can only hope. He sat back. <clears throat> 
and uh, patiently waited for Aslan to read the letter. Aslan opened the letter and began to read the very short announcement. Aslan, Uslan, you've been summoned to attend the next Pakan meeting. You will receive correspondence and understand the date and time properly, without kind regards, Java. Aslan started to sweat. His fingers shook slightly. Now that slimy mother effer, Java now chose to convene a meeting? To screw with his plans right now, with his meeting, he finally broke the months long silence, we'll get, which will get the other Pakans on his side for a little while longer. A uh, little while too long. So, boss, I think that's not very good news, his secretary quipped. Leonid, leave the room for a moment. Leonid stepped out of the office. The grizzled Pakan was left a few messed by the news. It was him who was supposed to take control of the clown show, not that cursed Georgian. Here, his hands had been forced. He needed to change his strategy. From here, would it be, there would be a couple options. He could try and convince the others that this meeting was just a ploy to keep them low for a little while again. He could find another Pakan with the same ambitions to form a coalition, or he could just kill the dude at the meeting, or take control there and there. Once again, Asan said and thought, greed kills. What do I want to do this side? I do and do industrial build up next. You grow unfortunately did not reap much benefit of the previous union. It was not west enough to be part of the European industrial breadbasket, and yet it was enough to be on the receiving end of the terror bombings. Not south enough to have cities developed in it, not east enough to have benefit from Bukharan's industrial plan, and not north enough to have industrial gulags built into it. And all in all, we're a Russian middle child, we'll have her claw our way out of this one on our own. The two hounds. Usulan wrinkled his nose, a small cigar smoking alcohol as he opened the door into the darkened depths of the great Pakan's office. Siciliani will sleep again. His dirty boots propped up on the desk as he lay back in his leather armchair, the cap pushed down over his eyes, the curd's jaw clenched as he walked up to the desk and cleared his throat. Pakan Nisiliani. Nisiliani would grumble something similar to a swear under his breath and slowly pushed the visor above his eyes with his index finger. Uh, yes, Usulian? Usulian. The great Pakan smirked, finding his purposeful mispronunciation somewhat humorous. Usulian's uh, lips <clears throat> thinned out as he placed the paper list in front of Usulian. Here's a list of newly ascended Pakans in the last month to share. Usulian yawned, grabbed the list lazily, his eyes beginning to scan the names, and an absent mindedly pronouncing bit of whiskey. I don't drink on work days, the curd responded curtly. Then take a seat. I have no time to lay around aimlessly. Now, this did cause Uzuliani to raise his eyes from the list, measuring Uzulian up predatorily before snorting and tossing the list onto the desk in front of him. Well, if you did your job better, Uzuliani, maybe you would. Maybe you would have at the time. We're missing Papa and Kikvadez. Next time, double check your crap before waking me up. The great Pecan would leave Mac in the leather chair yet again and nonchalantly push her cap back over his eyes. Suddenly, the conversation was over and that Uzuliani should take his leave. Barely continuing his frustration. With teeth grinding, Usulian left the office in that moment. Both of them shared only one thing in common. One thought, one phrase? A stupid prick. Very nice. I'm just here to, like, smuggle civilian weapons. Okay, 1.69. And that's stagnated. Uh, we have no money. I want to loot, but we have no one to loot. They have no money. They have no money. You know what, maybe just in case. Maybe we'll just get ready for the free aviators. I don't know, we'll probably get attacked again, but whatever. Hey, we have slightly more stability than earlier, which is good. The criminal code! What's actually done here? Oh, we lost all the stability. We actually get a political power now. The bond! A part on the circle meaning the Northern Bandits, date redacted. NKVD self, redacted. The transcript sure and to the highlight of the goals of the report. Asan Usuyan, hereby referred to as AU, the bandit bond is what kept his organized comrades. Reform? Do you not see this in an effort to split us up or split up the leadership? <clears throat> um Java Isulian, hereby referred to as JI. Enough, you blank should be think who you your blank speaking in front of. Uh, pause. Gentlemen, I won't say my a blank word. This is a blank look around. If we don't get our blank in order, we're gonna be torn apart limb by limb. The old system's gotta go if we want to keep our power, that is. Uh, preposterous, utterly preposterous. Conclusion, this team of the internal workings of the banditry are attempting to uh, form a uh, thief's law. Further inter invest internal investigation are to be made. The communists pay attention. Mm, military base. Honestly, this is okay. It's not bad. We're going to go with maintain the thieves' responsibilities. The bonds, pecan structure, serve as well. Strong and decentralized duchy like organization, allowing us to hold more land than it would originally be possible. Sacrifice as part of the code, be shooting our own brothers in the back and shoot ourselves in the foot. The privileges of the thief stays, if not for the loyalty, then our own stability. A loyal servant. Checkmate. Ocean placed the weather piece forward. Elo's eyes bulging as he silently mouthed to himself, taking the whole board before finally seeing how this king was locked into place, put down, sighing and scratching the back of his head. Good game, sir. The right hand man would stand up and straighten his, the creases of his grid jacket and corrected his worn tie. Certainly, the Kurd swiped the piece into the chest box and showed up, putting, away, putting it away emotionlessly. Ocean did not like the ruffle and dirt of the average bandits, though it was more reminding him of some mentally deficient green army. <clears throat> Peasants he heard so many stories of in his childhood. But Ilo Devdari signified uh, the complete opposite. The man almost always well groomed, elk and most importantly, still retaining his deadliness. Anyways, while it was a good break from my duty, sir, I need to get back on the task you gave me. Ilo would take out a cigarette, but noticing Usuyan's grimace would silently place it back in his pocket, not request not requiring a word complaint. 
And yet, for all the man similar to Costa Nostra Grunt, or the corporate dog that Usian wanted to emulate in his bin, there was still that unbreakable lingering smell of crap on business-like activities of self-indulgence. Of course, Raphael Bagdasaryan. Keep track of him if you may. The man was seemed weak well, but considering that he works well under uh, that oath, he probably has several surprises that would prefer to be neutered when the time comes. Vilo took out his butterfly knife, the feather whistling as he flipped it open. And if it's still open for a present, so to say, the curtain smiled only better. The lace. Reports on the circle meeting. Ah, uh, Isiliani says. Any kind of argument for lace reform? Pagan's president of the circle? Perfect. Uh, uh, Usiliani said, I agree, but. While his words are barely uh, audible, the general consensus along the lines of, here we blank go again. Why don't we look into further how those lights functions? Do we make a constant rate or an adaptive one? Well, maybe we should make some exceptions. Talk to Raph about this. If it brings it more into our coffers, I'll allow it. Nothing, the conclusion is nothing is unusual. The bandit wants to parasite off the proletariat so, in simply in new ways. The communists, of course, are not very surprised. Very valuable caravans. We didn't get that much, the 60%. 10%, 1.4% is insanely huge. 30%, huh? Oh. Yes. We definitely need more guns. No more my power too, but guns are a big old problem. Big old, look at this. Yes, we get one a day now. We have no stability to speak of, but the formalization. <clears throat> the civvies, the public, Asalan Osiyan says, How can the circle consider itself representative of the thieves? Well, the civvies cannot even know what we want from them, gentlemen. I believe that we must be shown to the civvies. Ah, possibly, however. You and yourself, you yourself said that we had to reform to survive, did you not? Oh, great pecan? Hmm? I, I effing did. Or was expl uh, blood blood blank did. Conclusions. Northern bands are attempting a bit for legitimacy. While the bands require legitimacy up to, for debate, but the commissariat has come to consensus that their defenses must be bolstered. The communists are worried. Their free tribute. Okay, well. And we're very successful. I love it when that happens. Honestly, I want to do this one. I want to do this one next. Poverty rate. I want to help with poverty. How about a little bit? Hey, Jabba. Oh, well. Happy uh, June, everybody. Ah. Of course, we had all that money, but now we're going to have to spend it a bit. On workers? Sure. Food for the hungry. Hey, even more money, stability, war support, political power. That's the uh, stuff we love. Beautiful. You know what? We're going to do this one, too. You get more stability in the end, too. Helps up our poverty. And then we'll go back and do raid valuable caravans. I kind of like this one. This one's okay. I mean, the Zotas infantry equipment is pretty decent. And we honestly need more, but overall, it's not bad. We want to increase our GDP or growth as well. Only one, huh? We have a lot of negative modifiers. Preserve the lace. The lace is an inalienable right for the, the pecans of the civilians of the lands they hold responsibility for. Voting these rights would mean that the pecans have less resources to arm themselves and their men, and even worse, less reason to say hello to us. The lace stays. We are not in the right to destroy it. A thousand more guns, more, way more stability, and get a point zero one billion, which is not much, but you know, I'll take whatever we can grab. And there goes the triumvirate. Not that we really care, honestly, but whatever. Nice. Preserve the circle's secrecy. The circle's always been a meeting for the pecans, and there's very little reason to change that. Civvies are the best kept in the dark. What they don't know won't hurt them, and the little they do know is rumors. Our decision is ours to make, and we don't need any more, more prying eyes than we already have. Finishing touches. Oh my god, we're going to lose so much political power. Get more civilian warfare, which is good. Get more attack and defense on core territory, which is okay. But it's just okay. It's not like, wow. Yeah, we're definitely going to do this one. So right now, our one is 1.422. 1.422. I wonder if this is stuff is all going to leave like once we're done here. That, uh, that would suck. We're in the desert. Now they're going to war with Yugoslavia. I'd love to write again, but whatever. It is a little laggy, though. 1.422. We still have a yearly deficit, which is not good, but whatever. 1.422. Uh. Preserve the lace, I guess. Hey, 2.3. Was that a point, like, 9 increase of growth? That's not bad. The finishing touches. After hours of arguing, screaming, and standoffs, the reviewed <clears throat> thieves' laws ready for its application. All those objects begin spreading and enforcing it. The territories will receive copies of the militia officers informed. 90% civilians, that's not bad. 
Even the Gunu has a lot more political power now, even though I guess I don't really want to do this one yet. And renovate the Yugosk's arms factory. Well, our territory cannot boast the industrial wonders of the Zatas and the trade benefits it grants them. We're not completely bare. The Yugosk arms factory, while smaller than the Zatas one, still produces a steady supply of weapons and has still room for improvement and expansion. Shifting our resources to renovate the crumbling but functional production facility could down to be a prudent investment. Minus 0.4, that's just a huge defeat to us. Spend a lot more money. And we'll still have the uh, stuff to pay them off. And they might actually want to raid us, which is actually not bad in my mind. Um, this is going to be, we've got enough guns. These guys are okay, they're not great. Um, we'll, we'll cut these guys down later on. Uh, you know what, let's duplicate. Keeping six for now is okay. We'll keep making the same type of division. Eventually, once we really go to war, though, we'll start expanding more stuff too. So that should be good. Uh, free aviators, sure. Why not? I love the free aviators. Expand the civilian sector. We lack the industrial power of the southern communists, both in organized labor and industrial experience, leaving a population that was out of almost every basic necessity. While well, it certainly is pleasant to live by armed robbery, if we wish to hold on to our rule, it's best time that we improve, begin to improve the lives of our citizens. Oh no, it's glitched. God dang it. No! Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to go back in and see what we can do anything about that. Which kind of sucks, but whatever. Her purpose of gulags. All oh, the gulag. The communist wet's dream. No food, shared responsibility, backbreaking labor. What else does a shrivel abomination eat out of other people? Jokes aside, the gulag will more still have their own uses. Maybe even build their own natural resources or granted their own workshops, so they'll have the capa capability to hold prisoners while getting themselves killed. The gulags just won't be your purpose for needs, whatever they are. The merchants. Jabo is ready for the merchants. He signed every footpad on the area to watch the road so he wouldn't be caught off guard again. The attachment of hunters were placed in the tall trees around camp. Thus, when the Zatal's convoy did come to the bandits, he would beat them out in his own terms. So when the merchants arrived, Jabo merged from his side, flanked by four guards armed to the teeth with the most intimidating and inefficient equipment he could scavenge. It was surprised when a single truck pulled into the camp and came out as a single merchant, not, a, not of death, but of opportunity. He seemed to sing when he spoke, yet his voice all managed to maintain integrity and directness. Jabba could only listen as a man made outrageous demands in exchange for nearly trivial promises, portrayed him in such a way that would make him a king understand. However, the deal boiled down to this. The bandits are a brave bunch, but they lack the numbers to protect their territories and loot properly. Thus, true, thought Jabba, there are occasional reports of thieves stealing from thieves. Therefore, Jeltaus is interested in offering protection for Yukura, but requires a simple favor. The loans of its units have passed through bandit territory. This must be some mysterious plan contrived in the dark halls of Zataos. Jabba has different plans. He would not bend to their merchants, but this could come in handy. We'll use him a little while, uh, a while longer. Maybe the time to ditch your dudes has come. Ah, oh, let's ditch him. Between the mannered ones. Eva corrected his tithes, well placed groom right hand man looking out of the place in the uh, in the circle's meeting place, surrounded by a few of the pecans who were receptive of his offers and calls. Some arriving with their own men. So what's this crap about? You said you were going to offer something. Well go ahead, Pavel Flint Kamenev tossed a cigarette aside and cocked him to his hand. Ilo looked around before smiling. Gentlemen, as we all know you are indebted to my employer, be it ammo, a man or amenities you have ordered, so Mr. Osoyan has been wonderful enough to as to forgive your debts. Elo threw his hands to the side, several set aside members coming out of the crowd. So that's it. Couldn't that Kurdish screwball just send a runner or a radio? Pavel sat standing up, his men on the other hand not moving an inch. I did not finish, please sit down, Elo pronounced, his expression flickering to a sudden cold stoniness. Pavel's bodyguard taking the rifles and aiming at their own pecan. Well, coming up to his hands, it makes a shock and rage tearing through his exterior. Sit down. Elo's face was now blank as he eyed Kamenev emotionlessly. Sit down, or your old men will blow your head open and one of you one of them will replace you for it. Pavel's hand sat into fists as he sat down. His bodyguard standing by his side, the other pecans also silent, the air of mistrust rippling through the circle. That's what I was saying. We are all forgiving your debts, but that must come with the price, that being a small decrease in autonomy, Elo pronounced cheerfully. As you can see on Mr. Pavel's case, we have already have you by your throat, so please be kind as to. Elo's grin extended up to his ears, yet his eyes were smiling. Not to resist? As we were still repurposing the gulags, of course. Um, rehabilitate. Let's rehabilitate the Sarampal Airport. Up until recently, there was very little reason for us to pay the airport any mind. Our enemies rarely had any air power, and the Free Aviators already had to rule the skies for several decades. But, considering the new direction Uyghur is heading in, getting a functional air force is vital to our further victories and expansion, and something like a functioning ra runway tends to do wonders for the state of aviation. Yes. Yes, it does. What else do we have here? So, we could do this one, which I want to do, but I still want to do this one again, since we do have the political power right now. Ooh, but we can scavenge. Oh, we gotta scavenge. So we can maybe get attacked, so that way we can defend ourselves. Mario drove to the door, bang bang! Revolver fire echoed through the dim hallway, nearly avoiding him. It would take more than that to kill Mario Fusco, we thought. As the assailant aimed his 38, 38 special at him and clang. Someone had dropped a tray in the barracks. 
A sound they had used to get, get get used to. Back aboard Kuta, things falling to the ground loudly meant someone near you was in trouble, and trouble meant vicious beatings. The guards were there were merciless. They see you make the smallest mistake, and they hit you on the spot, not too bad, but never manageable. If you really screwed up, though, they would wait. Sometimes they would wait hours, sometimes days. So all it took was a moment of reprieve, smoking a cigarette, or stretching, even squatting down, and they pounce. No one ever came back from a Vokuta being the same, so I went mad after just a couple. Lena tried to get back to his book, but kept on thinking, thinking about before. Vokuta was a heck call. Before the Great Patriotic War, or whatever they called the desolation of the Russians, it was squalid and unforgiving. Beatings were constant, disease was rampant, and it was too much cold, even for Siberia. Things only got worse after the war. The camp got cleaned up, but they killed all the nice people. Everyone still got sick, and it was even colder. Blokken, the eternal dude, decided making the guards even meaner was how he would maintain order. Like everything else he did, he blew up in his face. When Blokin took control of everything, his first move was to try to wrangle the gangs. He got most of them under his foot, but then he tried to make the Georgian comply. Blokin failed to see that Jab was a bigger dude than him even, and the boys had enough of his checkup BS. Half the prisoners were given guns and cigarettes if they agreed to shoot at the guards, not no one refused. Political prisoners, gangsters, killers, landowners, even a few old nobles took those guns and shot at the guards of beating us for 30 years. Of course they were much better armed than we were, but we were just well armed enough to get the heck out of there and set up here. There are a lot of things better than Vorkuta now. We have money, guns, food, and freedom. Even the army's free. Best of all, we have books now. It's been 15 years since Leo had read a book, and now he could read whatever he wanted. With a sliver of contentment in his heart, Leo and got back to his book as the assailant aimed a 38 at him and fired. The bullet zipped past Morrow's round body, hitting the forklift he was driving, crippling the engine. Curses. Nobody screws with a Fusco. Morrow drew his piece and uh, put a bullet in the large man who was chasing him. The blood uh, dyed his black skin red. As the body fell, Mario sat and looked down at his pistol. You're going to have to try harder than that try to stop the Fusco. After all, I'm free. So the outmix civilian smuggle those supplies, and then we'll raid. Because we can. Has not been raided. Uh, free aviators eventually, so we will raid them too. Ooh. Actually, for this one, Army of Saint George. Uh, they need money for stuff. Actually, the Army of Saint George. Uh, actually, uh, as I saw on the on the tree, maybe not the tree. Oh, uh, you know what? Screw it. Just going to do this one anyways. Um, and from the Steam page, which I'll link in the first link in the description below, because they had a page update. Um, there's a focus tree for the Army of Saint George, but I don't think it's in the game yet. At least it was on one of the images for the mod, but we're 2.899%. We've got to remember that. 2.899. 1.17. Nice. 2.899. 0 0.20 billion in deficit. Uh, inflation's not bad. They're almost 40% there. Oh my god. Why is it always glitched to do this now? I don't understand. I really just do not. Man, uh, that's so stupid. What? What? Uh, you know, please, please fix your stuff. But I don't want to do about lamentations or chance of redemption. You're late. The foreman looks sternly at the three men. Mikhail Iozevich, Gorich, Gorovich, Sergei Vladimirovich, Lucian, Artyom Ivanovich, Mikolian. Former plane designers before the lackluster planes got them thrown into Porkuta had been selected to rebel at Siren Paul Airport. On the first day of work, they arrived 23 minutes late. Sergei stepped forward and bowed. An apology, my deepest apology, sir. We were held up by a few holes in the road. You can understand, sir. Sergei hopped. No, oh, actually, I don't. I came over the same way and I didn't have any troubles with the roads, said the foreman. Sergei's eye had immediately fallen apart. To the astonishment of approximately no one. Whatever, the foreman pulled out a crumpled piece of paper unfolded and read aloud. Mikhail Iozovich Gurevich. Sergei Vladimirovich Lucian and Artyom Ivanovich Mikoyan, you have been hired by the thieves in law of Ugar to restore and renovate Sarum Paul Airport for the purposes of civilian use and the needs of the thieves in law. Gurevich, um, you are in charge of designing a new airfield runway. Ilyushin, you are in charge of redesigning the hangars for larger planes and maintenance crews. Mikoyan, you are in charge of the construction of new crews. Or, or, or really, a um, new airport facility designed for all uses of the people that the thieves' territory of Yugoro will acquire from it. Are there any questions? The foreman lowered his paper and looked out at the three remarkably short men. Artyom raised his hand. Thank you, sir, but aren't you the foreman supposed to be in charge of this operation? Artyom asked. The foreman said, no. You three are in charge of the operation. I tell my men what you want done and I have them do it. Are we clear? I, th I think so. Artyom muttered. Ilyushin clicked his tongue and Godovich looked at the battered airfield. Now, what is our first course of action? Oh, the three, Godovich spoke first. Repair the airship. Once that's done, we'll be able to fly in supplies and diplomats. There's not much out here, but that'll suffice while we'll keep building. Former correct, very, very small, small. On it, boss. Three stooges. Adjust the supply lines. Our supply lines are riddled with limited efficiencies. The local armies and militias commonly relying on emergency support from locals or businessmen like Usu Yun to win their skirmishes. While such desperate measures aren't uncommon, what does this say about the state of our armed forces? If our supply lines can't handle a small battle, how will they handle an all at war? Our infrastructure and supply will be rethought. Roads will be rebuilt. Production boosted. Are boosted. Time to get out of the Ebos. Will carry us. Mind. Get out of the Abel's will carry his mind. Redraw the gang's territory. Yugur's political landscape is extremely fractured. The land is people split between one too many pecans. 
If we wish to become more effective in our rulership, they are to be merged. This will allow us to get rid of the less competent of our pecans while rewarding the more loyal and effective, receiving greater loyalty and provincial development in return. Radio Yugorsk, the debut. Is this thing on? Hello, testing one, two. Oh, we're on. Good morning, Thieves and Lao. You're listening to Radio Yugorsk. I'm your host, George Kennan, and I can just say how great it is to be out of that camp. You were all there, you all know how bad it was, but now we're free. Free as America, and I can tell you that I'm from out there. And anyway, that's what's on the board for the day. From the capital, we have big, big news. The second meeting of the boss has finally been convened after months, if not years, of waiting. There's a lot of stake here, if you don't know. This meeting might just decide all of our fates. Of course, personally, I'm just happy not to be squatting in a camp. But I know a few anonymous folks among us that care about what's going to happen next. Now, our most likely course of action is that we all go and shoot Blokin and his boys, which is personally my favorite course of action, but... And I do mean a big but... Not all of us are going to come back from that. We're relatively evenly matched. We've got discipline, then they, we, uh, they've got discipline, and we've got energy. When we're out there shooting those commie dudes, make sure you hit them in the head. It hit, makes it'll get them to lick of the fire sooner. Of course, there's still some stuff to do around the house. They're rebuilding the old airport, sending the flyboys out there and all. Plus, we could always have a few more guns. However, and I do mean however, a little birdie told me that there's something going on up at the top. Something with two people who don't like each other very much. No, there's not much information to share about it, and even less than I'm, that I'm at liberty to share. But my advice to you is this. Things are going to heat up. Conclude the circle meeting. As conflicting as the latest circle meeting was, something I knew has emerged in the air. A sense of genuine change. You'd be the reforms for the better or for the worse. The pecans are more ready for the war for than they ever were in the last decade. Morale, once again, is quite high. That's scavenge for loot. 44% stability is pretty good. We also cut down the debt by to 11%, which is actually really nice. Because I did, I did do the external investments. Um, uh, decision over... Uh, here under war development, so... We're losing a lot of political power, but, you know, it's, it's worth it. So help us out. So we save some political power to go up there as we're doing the finishing touches and concluding the meeting, of course. So we're going to lose 0.4 more political power every single day. Oh my god, that's so god awful. Get quite a bit more stability, which is nice, but still. Ooh. You're all military district, huh? This one shouldn't be glitched again. For the love of god, please don't be glitched. He also on his closing speech. The great pecan takes the stage in the last minutes of the meeting. With enthusiasm, with pecans, the time is right for a swinging speech. Come on. Oh, we're getting rid of caravans again. That's always nice. Oh my god. Why is it always glitched? I don't understand anymore. Oh. The game might crash. Uh. Okay. Oh boy. Well, it's still glitched. God dang it. Uh, fairly quiet ones. Uh, so what is this about? No. Nur Sultan's grimace at Raphael, the man sitting relaxedly in the forest clearing, picking at something in his shoe sole with a small stick. I got a piece to get back to you. Uh, of course, Mr. Tinyushbaev, of course, although I suggest your men lower the rifles. The Raphael did not let his gaze continue to look at his shoe, ignoring the two men that flanked the Kazakh Pakan. And no way. There's a little resistance going on with you higher ups. I ain't got anything to hide, but I ain't letting you go through my corpse's pockets either. Nur Sultan sneered, not moving from his place. Say your piece, and I'm off. Raphael sighed, scratching his head nervously. Well, this is quite uncomfortable, but I do have to ask. Go on. The Pecan certainly garnered the feeling that he was being watched, but overlooked it. Raphael is famous for his cowardice and straightforwardness. It surprised the Kazakh how he would stay easily on his right hand for so long. Well, how do I say this? As I remember, you had, not, they had to lose several cities with an established capacity of around 50,000 rounds, was it? Forgive me, my ammo c c counting abilities have gone down recently. And there's still clenched his jaw, giving her a signal with a cross of his arms for the bodyguards to prepare to shoot. Yeah, I paid out the promised 10 of the Great Pecan's forces. Why? Well, yeah, yes, well, several of your men had reported me about a certain deal with extra bandit The Kazakh's blood had gone cold. Uh, fire! Effing! Fire! Nur Sultan's order was cut short with a knife to the side and the found of gunfire behind him. One of his bodyguards dropping dead, the pecan sinking to his knee, hissing from the pain of his feather stuck between his ribs. Good work! Reaktushev. He can now recognize the unsure voice of Raphael uh, Bagdasarian. That, uh, Bojan says suddenly grew even cold. Now, a small choir of rifle clicks sounded from behind the tree line, several dozen bandits stepping forward, circling the Nur Sultan. But I talk about in the terms I prefer, Mr. Tinyushbaev. As we conclude the meeting first, as we desperately try to get this one done. Come on! I don't understand why it doesn't work. Like, bruh. Like, oh, really. Like, we're. Oh, I still have 22 days left. I'm still scavenging for more loop, so. The new code is, well. At least there's no penalties to have this one. The meeting's concluded. Everyone waits. It is still honest to give his final speech. The thieves last stand. We may be bandits and thieves in the eyes of many, but there are many things we aren't. We aren't power hungry NKVD dudes holding the population in a prison camp. We aren't deranged Omskovite fanatics. We aren't the obscure remnants of a failed ideology. And we aren't nihilistic pseudo capitalists slinging guns up to the right. So, for all intents and purposes, we may be bandits and thieves, but we're sure the last shred of sanity in this corner of Russia, and we aren't going down without, of course, a fight. Our fight. 
Jabo stood out in front of the bustling circle of bo mob bosses, staring at each and every grizzled criminal veteran as they gossip and schemed with each other. The meeting had been a very mixed bag of success, although his security as leader was by no means as sure, the position of Borkuta was clear. As the mad general German Goebbels said in the 30s, they want total war. As assumed to be formal, Jabo prepared a speech to close the meeting. He gave a sharp ahem, silence in the busy group, and began, Everyone, bosses, seconds, ground troops, all of you gathered here today. We have gathered, we have spoken, we have decided. For too long, Blokin and his... Stupid thugs have existed on this earth, brutally beating, starving, killing not only men like us, but innocent men. Men whose only wrongdoing was not being the same as the dead government. Not long ago, it was us in those camps, but we have escaped. And those men still stay there behind. Now, though, we have an opportunity to save thousands, put thousands more in deserved body bags, and put ourselves on the map. We have guns, men. We have men who can use those guns, too. And we have men who can aim those guns at blocking. So, as the thief in law of thief in laws, I make this demand we mobilize. We prepare for the inevitable war, the true war, the war that we are meant to fight, the war we have to fight. The people of Ugra, it's Vori uh, the Zakon. Soldiers and common folk must unite to take down our greatest and deepest opponent. But we'll dispose the king in this barbed wire casket and bury him in it. We're done with when we're done with Borkuta, there'll be nothing left but blood dust and the bones of those darn guards, and their guns shoved so far up their butts you can only see the butt end. The time has come for war and we will face Blokin and his devils, however. Although we have the spirit to rip them apart, we don't have enough machine guns to do it with. If we want to truly and decisively destroy everything Blokin holds dear, we need more guns. We need better training, better equipment. The Sarampal airport is still being renovated, and we don't have any planes. Not only that, but we know that the Gulags have more than all the things that we need uh, than, uh, than we do. If we want to win, we have to be organized. Once we have the organization, we'll have the means to reach victory. Once we're good to under our control, we'll have the means to become a real country. A real country. If we don't get up and seize this opportunity, it might never come around again. This is it. This is our fight. The room, rather surprisingly for a disgruntled or disunited group of criminal leaders, erupted. And an unanimous applause for the moment. Uh, the divisions and allegiance disappeared in favor of a united front against their enemy. In all aspects, it was a very successful meeting for Jabba Isiliani. No mercy and forever free. Forever free. As, of course, we're doing the uh, Thieves' Last Stand. <clears throat> if you want to read that again, please go ahead. But the smooth decision category will be unabled and get more wars for it, which is nice. Even though we already have 67% stability, which is pretty good. So. So overall, a very, a very, very nice. So, uh, I can't wait to see what this, if there's any different smuta mechanics right now um, than than were last time. Ah, uh, show on El Escoba. Uh, let's get all this, this industry stuff done. And I also need more output too. It's only 1963. Max construction uh, construction speed wouldn't be bad. Organization. Uh, let's do that one instead for now. So, overall, not bad. Not bad. Oh, what are we doing down here? Building new schools? That's right, we're building schools. We want an education for some of these people. Not everybody, but uh, most of these people. But, the leaves a lesson. 35 day focus. Alright. The thieves last stand. Oh, look at this. Military supplies amassed. Move with haste. With the Germans bickering and fighting amongst themselves, the dreaded Luvava has been cleared off our skies. To the delight of the people of Russia, but also to those above them. A new opportunity has struck. With no obstacles to their plans, the warlords are ambitiously planning to end the smooth and take the motherland for ourselves. And that includes even us. We shall prepare our bands for the battles to come, and with tenacious hard work, all the riches of Russia shall be ours. Awesome. And we're improving poverty too, which is... It's amazing. So we're back here with the smoothed decisions. Um, honestly, I kind of want to leave free aviators last because we could always raid them, but that might be a little difficult. Honestly, if we get them first, though, hmm, 51, 50, 80 percent new stockpiles, supplies incoming. Uh, we have a lot of war support, which is actually really nice. Is there anything else we can do down here just yet? We can't raid anybody, right? Because it's oh, actually we can raid people. Oh, hmm. So who do you want to attack? The Ural military district at all? Zatalus? I want to save Zatalus for last, if we possibly can. 7 to 8, that's not good. Creator Aviator's free territory. Brokuta might actually be the best one to take out first. I kind of want to take out Brokuta. That'd be good. 15 days, we lose political, a lot of political power and command power. Honestly, yeah, be, let's take out Brokuta first. And then we can start working on coring their lands. And yeah, go from there, basically. You know what, if you want this? Logistics would not be bad. It could be offensive first, though. Brokuta. And that way, we're always protected from the north anyway, so it doesn't even matter. That's right. <clears throat> and we can close out this one too, because we don't really need this one open for now. Revise our strategies. Arm the bandits. Ooh, that's not bad. Oh, we can use the manpower and guns. As a famed bandits of Russia, we pride ourselves in being able to work and steal freely from everyone and anyone. To that end, we use all available means affordable to us to rob and pillage for money, food, and the many natural resources left in our motherland, however. 
Time to change him. The warlords that surround us are many times stronger. Our soldiers fight not for riches, but their leaders' megalomaniacal goals of total conquest, masquerading in so-called ideals and ideologies that the masses would die for if we want to become the greatest plunder in Russia has ever known. Or to adapt to these times as well. A new weaponry, revolution, evolutionary successor to the AK-47, and even the best tanks and aircraft this heckle can provide, should be the weapons of the future for the criminals of tomorrow to bask in Russia. With the Kalashnikovs on our sides, we shall have the available resources to develop it all, and all and in the greatest of our desires, will we hope that within a decade or so, all of Russia will be plundered of its great, great riches for our favor. I suppose the war should be divided evenly among those new soldiery of an abandoned state. That'd be good to do. Ooh, more growth, too. A whole whopping 1%. That's pretty good. Ooh, I don't remember which one I chose. Uncle Hassan's magic. One and a half percent. Thanks to Usulian's contacts, because the construction of new barracks and infrastructure, or new the Great Pecan never misses. Oh wow! Look, at, look, look. The more command power we have, the more military supplies we can gain. We will sure receive. And the more experience, uh, army experience we possess, the more political power we'll receive. If we find ourselves at war, it should be larger. Guess will be larger. Ooh, military professionalism goes up. Now I might do Uncle Hassan's magic. So, get get there. Also, we're going to convert these guys to real infantry. We don't have enough guns for that. Because these guys are actually 18 combo with, and I threw on engineers, so we'll be lacking a little bit. But once we take these guys out, we should be okay. Because their soldiers are not bad; they're just they're also very depleted too. So we should do okay. We got some raid them, but if we can move fast enough, an important step. And the main hut of the Pakats, Pakans, it was always noisy, uh, or noisy as always. A thief was cleaning his pistol. Someone was playing cards for cigarettes, and another was sitting in the back, leaning back on a chair and smoking them. After several campaigns, raids, and captures, everything was on a budget, but still, some kind of ghost of menace was wavering over them. The ghost of a darker past. The door creaked and began to open, and Jabba Isuliani and his closest subordinates came in. Many abruptly got up from their chairs, put others on their cigarettes, others put out their cigarettes, and continued to sip. But everyone understood that it was not with the best news. Sit down, sit down, don't be afraid, I just have one announcement, brothers. Everyone obeyed the order of the sheep. A chair was brought to Jabba. He sat down, took off his military cap, took a cigarette with a match from someone sitting in the room, and lit it. Well, gentlemen, today's an important day. We're going on another raid. Everyone smiled again, began to whisper, while Jabba looked at them with his menacing gaze. It's not for loot. We're going to have a go to the gulags. The noise of the fallen gun and later a body. The Bacans abruptly got up and saw the old prisoner of Voron lying on the floor. Was having a seizure, many began to look for something near the bedside, the bedside table. One of them went up to the uh, lying Voron and opened a bottle of ammonia next to the nose of the fallen one. A minute passed, and there was more movement in the hut now than all the years before. Jabba was already standing over the awkward of Voron with a cigarette in hand. The sixty-year-old man had seen the gulags in a Bukharin. After the failure of the front and all the horrors of Akuta under Kaganovich, he wanted to say something to Jabba, but his voice clearly died down. Jabba, having extinguished his cigarette from the ashtray on the nightstand with his call and called his subordinates, put on his cap and left the hut with him. Voron got up, sat down on the bed with the help of others. Then he looked around the thieves, looking anxiously, and then at the door. Then at himself, Voron took the gun and loaded it and told everyone in the hut, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to shoot some of Blokin's cocksuckers. So the chaos goes down. We'll unlock new sabotaging decisions. It's not bad. I like this one a lot. We're going to go with that one. Improv improvise, but effective. Ooh, more day. Oh my god. Effective change daily political power game plus 1.25. Holy smoking fathers. That's a lot. But these guys, this is also really good. Cancel non-aggression pact. Um, it's not bad. Actually, let's go through this side first for now. I don't mind at least getting this one first, but getting that one's very good. So I'm looking investments. <clears throat> Despite how much we pride ourselves on the way we are, the reality is that like every state has ever existed. The thief territory of Uyghur needs investors to run its economy and keep it afloat. The people with the most money have been at the most influential in the history of humanity. As we can prove to ourselves, and we need money, them now more than ever to get the state off its footing in, in the new world. Luckily, our mysterious nature to the rest of the outside world means that any desperate fool that decides to invest in this crap will be convinced that we're just another patch of land for the grabbing instead of who we really are. By the end of the day, though, it shall greatly benefit us in our industry, getting us on the edge with the rest of the world powers, or war warlord powers. But probably at the expense of the investor. Probably. Oh, show weapon trapping. Ooh, solar weapons to the Bashkortostan. This infantry increases our liquid reserves by two hundred percent of our monthly income. Interesting. And we'll spend point zero three billion. Oh, oh, they they'll get that, so they spend the money. Interesting. I like I like that. You sell guns. Um, for all this stuff though, I mean, do we? Oh, actually, that's not bad. More political power and weekly manpower. Ooh. We need more weekly supplies. Encourage a war effort, which we're not going to do. Yeah, I don't want to touch the supplies too much. War support, that's not enough to really do those. Um, it depends on what we do. I really don't mind spending a little bit more supplies. Weekly, man, that's a lot, that's a lot of manpower. And that's a lot, oh, weekly, oh, I gotta go with that one. I have to. That's that's so good. Uh, how big is this state? Here, here. There you go. Just go up and around. Literally just go up and around them. 
Oh no, no, up and around, up and around. You go here. No, you actually could probably tag team Vorkuta maybe. Yeah. Or maybe not. Or just keep him in place at the very least. Oh, we won there, huh? Well, if it's not working, then so be it. Why don't you go here, then? Ah, they have another division, eh? Petrota. Arm the bandits. Um, some lucky investments, yeah. Oh, we have these two guys, too, as well, huh? Honestly, go right there. All paths grow thorns. You will see on Pace's office at Elo Rathalus, two food trucks, several tons of small ammo, arms, ammunition, and seized ammo depot. And now, the curtain stopped in his tracks, turning on his heel, staring down his right hand man. Well, Elo corrected his tie nervously, blinking a couple of times. Well, what, sir? Well, what did that oath respond to our demands? Usuyon rounded his desk, sitting down, interlocking his fingers. When will this stop? Oh, uh, well. <clears throat> Elo opened the crumpled note, clipping to the notebook, you know, clearing it, so I quote, Let the boys have some fun. A few missing bullets is no harm done. Madness, utter madness. The curtain interrupted his assistant, sitting again. Measure the room with the steps. This is not a lack of discipline. Who does that brute take me for? Elo waited for a pause in the tire. You certainly are correct. The destruction of assets in such a massive wave is unlikely to be. I know, Elo. I know. No need to repeat my thoughts. Usuyon rubbed his temples. This must end. Put all drivers on the smuggling routes off the main roads. No more emergency aid. I want you to crush his suck up skulls. Start them above everything. The expert will make up for it. That end will be paying his debts threefold. Revising our strategies, though. As we consolidate our hold over the lands, our lands will plan ahead. With the unification of Russia under our rule, we'll have to be aware that we're currently just that, as weak as other, other warlords are. And the way our army is run is not the best either. Therefore, we need a new strategies to make sure we outmaneuver our enemies and defeat them in the dog eat dog competition that is a second time of troubles. Our efficient and smart generals will do their finest and lead us into swift victory, and soon all of Western Russia will be ours. Pretty nice. Smuggle weapon, war planning. Hey, they want to attack us too, that's fine with me. I think we're going to go all the way around and try to destroy these guys as much as possible. You can have all two if you want. Especially just throwing them there. That'd be good. So we're almost there, almost there, almost there, and... Some lucky investments. How many minutes have we lost? 30,000 versus 3,000. That's not good, huh? Reinforcements for a price. The snow world around Jabba Isuliani as he made his way to the caravan, taking heavy steps in the mud. As the convoy waited on the other side of the compound, his fur covered traders drew envious looks from the freezing sentries. For a moment, Jabba thought that a mocking smile flashed across the merchant head's face. He gazed through the mountain tracks, equipped to pass through any kind of blizzard, while he, the most successful bandit in all of Russia, had to arrive on a horse. The merchants brought out three dozen crates of rifles, bullets, and some of the combat knives for the chiefs. Jabba took one of the guns, an old AK-47, his barrel was bad, but could get the job done. He turned his head and nodded to the bandits. They grabbed the crates and carried them off. Not unlike how a vulture feasts on the scraps left by a fierce predator. In turn, some food pads emerged from a nearby bush with heavy six or heavy sacks across their shoulders. They deposited these into the mountain trucks and disappeared back into the woods. The head trader returned with a dry smile, reaching into his overcoat and producing a letter. Jabba took it, but before he could open the seal, the merchants had already started their engines. The uh, head trader yelled out, The Zatalus appreciates his deal, and we hope that many more will follow. Send a message to us with your reply. There's a lot more from where that came from. The trucks rolled out of the compound. A strong gust of snow blew into Jabba's smiling face. The pigs took the bait. Nice. You can buy more guns. Get them off from the capital. Just another day. In the wee hours of the morning, multiple board guards will be suddenly be dragged out of a sleep by the sun and gunfire. Uh, <clears throat> Battle cries and the rolling of vehicles as the band is stabbed deep into the aviator's territory for the second time that week. The adults will scramble to dust off the rivals while their children will be taken far away from their homes to escape the incoming bloodbath. The fighting... Uh, then the fighting happened. The dudes would storm the town, setting homes alight as they grabbed anything that appeared even the slightest bit valuable. Valiant men and women would waste their lives defending what little positions they had left, sacrificing themselves as the raiders would move further inland, taking more and more, but just as hope appeared lost. They would suddenly retreat to their dens with their arms full of stone loot, disappearing within mere minutes, in, within within an hour. The only proof that they ever would be the cooling bodies on the floor, and the destruction they'd wrought in the short stay. The children returned to the town to find Papa and Mama bleeding out in the cold Russian snow, and their homes reduced to a little more than burning cinders in the dirt. But as life must go on, the survivors would rebuild, attempting to remake their homes and plant more crops, only to be attacked again next week. Such is life in the Russian anarchy. The resources are put to better use in our hands. Uncle Hassan's magic. 
Why would why work our butts off if Uncle Hassan can find someone else to do the job? The thieves were widely convinced by Usulian's arguments at the later circle meeting. The Kurdistani assured that the Pakans that he had the right context to help industrialize our territory in exchange for relaxed business restrictions when the, we reunify the U region. The corporations can be friends with the ripe trade. Who could stop us with the might of capitalism by our side? The spider's words are honey to most ears, even more with the mention of money. With Uncle Hassan's help, we'll become richer than any bandit before us. Ooh. Thanks to Usulian's context, we'll begin the construction of new barracks and infrastructure in our strategic regions, changing the popularity of despotism and moral growth. You honestly could probably just do this right now. There you go. You could all do this. And they're dead. There you go. So right now we're at 6.438. 6.438. 6 6 Let's see if it actually changes it or not. Have you snow? That was a normal meeting, or normal normal in the camp when Yugura. Or Yura and his team were ordered to go on what seems to be a routine patrol. They were leaving that afternoon, the orders were clear. <clears throat> Scout the outskirts of Urkuta, map out all the guard posts, and investigate for possible weak points in their lines. When they set out from the camp, Ura and his men were in a state of ecstasy, and they were hoping for an exciting adventure. Some of them wondered how many men they could kill, or if they were going to see something at all. As time passed, the grim reality of Siberia sent in. As the sharp freezing winds embraced their bodies, they could only wonder when this would be over. You all remember easier times, remembering sitting by a campfire when he was younger. The stories of his father before the war, how they'd sit by the chimney and escape the cruel winter. You all hoped that this would be soon over, over soon, so he could go back to camp and end his godforsaken mission. Better times, improvised but effective. <clears throat> As we set to expand, traditional warfare cannot be the only thing we rely on to just do that. We must discover new alternative methods of war to trick and destroy our enemies swiftly and effectively. Fortunately, little idiots in the factories are on in action building devices that will serve this purpose handily. Improvised bombs are the future, and we screwers will go on to those tanks and give them a one-way ticket to heck. Ye. The task provides arms, details. The caravan of, of trucks arrived on the premises of Triple X camp yesterday, carrying with the blank crates of Kalashnikovs and other weapons. Blank caches with helmets, vests, combat rations, and a pen were also handed over as complimentary gifts. This was just in time, too, as Com Commissar Blank reported a lack of supplies on the front. Spending a lot of money here. Uh, uh, P.S. Sir, the firearms manufacturers of the task are superior to most of our current equipment. Aside from better technology, the soldiers say the weapons are just less prone to jamming and fewer of the grenade duds. The production quality indicates machine factories. With your permission, sir, I do wish to contact the merchants again and negotiate more contracts. These weapons can help us win in the war. The help is, of course, appreciated. You should be able to beat up these militia. We'll cut the gulags captured. If you wonder about that, please go ahead. Uh, never again. Not like this. Good! Free aviators, yes. Hopefully it's not glitched again, god dang it. Um, occupy it. So we do this. All sit to the cores of the Vokurta correct the labor camp. We'll go, uh, have those cores gone and ours installed. Get 190 command power. Uh, get less civilian chaos, more growth slightly, and more admin efficiency. I really want to go to the Ural military district. Um, I don't mind doing this, but oh, the us would be very difficult to take out right now. Let's raid them first. Yeah, it's the north. Do we actually have planes here? Oh, we have transfer planes. Eventually we will. You only get 3% more, huh? Uncle Hassan's magic! There you go. They refuse tribute, eh? And we won! Uh, let's do a research facility. I haven't yet, not yet done that one, and we'll go with the free aviators next. <clears throat> that will be so good to do. Oh my god, that's so good. Um, sabotaging our enemies. War stuff, as we all may know, our position currently is in a perilous state. Therefore, we must uh, think out of the box and do something. Some <clears throat> cheating. Uh, oh wow, look at the reserves increased by 600%. Jesus Christ. Our operatives will sneak into the territory of our enemies and degrade their military capabilities to the point where we may actually stand a chance against them. We can find those operators everywhere, and after all, we were the thieves who escaped the law. Sneaking in should be our natural ability at this point. Nice. So we have 10 days left before we can go to war with these guys, which is fine. They have no one, literally no one there. So... Here for him, no. Um, you know, actually, let's come over here. Details, no. Details, no. Well, actually, yeah, winter expert, but eh. Mm, probing attack, eh. Let's see. 
Killing with Wild Scavenger. A scavenger wouldn't be bad. Let's go with Scavenger for that guy. Uh, Zakharov, uh, Scavenger as well. We have plenty of command power. We have plenty. We can lower it. Anyways, you know what? We'll do that one. We got plenty of command power for now. That is totally okay with us. Jamaica stays, huh? Hey, and there we go. Let's go in, shall we? Um, I always choose strategic theater. I just think it's the best one overall, especially for us in uh, Russia here, since we don't have that many helicopters. You know, I would eventually like a lot of helicopters as well, though. Just another day. In the wee hours of the morning, multiple border guards would suddenly be dragged out of sleep by the sound of gunfire, battle cries, and the rumbling of vehicles as the bandits stabbed deep into the aviator's territory for the second time that week. But they'd also scramble to dust off their rifles, while the children would be taken far away from their homes to escape the incoming bloodbath, of course. But I read this earlier too, so the resources are better put to use in our hands, of course. Hey, let them see our guns. While their military capabilities are upgrading more and more, the big the call for bigger weaponry is getting well bigger as well. The enemy armies have entire truckloads of armor, tanks, artillery, fire jets, overwhelming forces with, so we will show them ours. Massive guns shining on the horizon, their cannons ready to strike any unfortunate foul that dares to stand against us into oblivion. They will be our symbol for which all of Russia will fear us. So take out the free aviators. There's literally nothing there. Uh, we just destroy them all. Destroy the gulags. Long ago, the gulags of the Soviet Union were horrible and treacherous traps, known as the place where the thugs and ordinary citizens whose only crime were th uh, thinking the wrong way. The poor dudes were sent there to serve the rest of their lives in the so-called glory of the dictator Bukharin. Many of our comrades have ended up there, and they just know how heckish they are. Now I've captured the most notorious of them all, Borkuta. The remnants of the communists there so ran this factory and so many prisoners to the ground, and we as fellow criminals will give them the justice they deserve. Every single Soviet officer will be shot, and the corpses will be dug into the rubble by the buildings and machines they helped create. And we should give the victims the job of just doing that. And after the two men stared at each other closely, seemingly looking into the other's eyes, as if they were trying to read their thoughts, General Pavel Batov looked at his letter in his hands. The great pecan sitting in front of him was defending his surrender before a word even properly started. Mr. Izuliani, you will address me as the great pecan. I will do no such thing. We are sitting here today as equals. You have asked for my submission. You offered me mercy and say that our men will have a chance for glory. But men of the Third Army do not wish for, for glory money. What is there to steal in this impoverished land but from our own people? The Red Army has only one purpose, to serve Russia no matter the cost. General Batov, I urge you to reconsider. We're not the bandit rabble you believe us to be. The Bratva is just that, a brotherhood. We are not merely a mafia, just another uh, petty fiefdom, and any thief worth his honor will die for a Bratva without a second thought. Your choice is simple. We will crush your Red Army one way or another. Whether you outlive it is up to you, deluded fool. And the aviator shot down. Finally, we penetrate the defenses of Sotokut with ease. The lines of the free aviators and the aviators themselves are finally ours. We have to admit that these men are, <coughs> women are nothing less than heroes. Heroes, courageous, righteous, and brave. They defended our land from the bloodthirsty Germans in the Luftwaffe, and we've been have to thank them for their service and everything they have done. But this world is the opposite of righteous. It is cruel, and only the strongest can survive in it. And it shall be us and us alone. Look at the aviators who join our cause and use their aircraft for our far-reaching goals of conquest and riches. 65%. Now we can still go to war with them, but we're going to go to war with these guys next. Hopefully we can do well, but uh, we don't. We don't. Yeah, you never know. 7% growth, not good enough. The trial of Blokin. Vasily Mikhailovich Blokin, the administrator, laid on the coal floor, his broken rib reverberating with painful pulses in his chest. His caved and skull screeching with a migraine, his lips whispering obscenities, and even when he had long lost his strength to stand, or even to shout, the hunger swallowed his innards. Those dudes, those little guys, who gave them the right to even touch him? These subhumans, these utter dregs of society, who are they to put him on trial? They do no wrongdoing. <coughs> no crime, there was no skin off the nose of what the thrice darned dogs had to think of him. If it was his call, each one of them would be, uh, be back toiling in the gulag. He served them justice, to all of them, so who are they to think they did and right to call, serve this parody to him? The sealed door is still open with a whining creak. One of the guards peering in, giving Blokin a couple of painful pokes with the barrel of his rifle. Uh, a voice sounded from behind the door. Is he still up? The guard poked Blukin again, a traitor's pain grunt escaping the administrator's lungs. Yeah, the guard yeah, giggled drunkenly. Well, a few more days without food, and it was certainly kicking. The Blukin felt the boot slam into his side, his broken rib, igniting with a roaring agony, his voice rising to a pitiful shout. A good night, ba Pasha. Papasha. Don't keep the Reaper waiting. The guard laughed, the sound of his boots disappearing behind the steel door, leaving Blukin alone with his enraged thoughts. Justice in one form or another, of course. Even more words, but we have 100%, so there's no point in doing that. Um, we could fight those people but we're not going to right now. Judgment. Casimir pleaded desperately, but it was no use as the dude sneered at him, laughing at him as the crimes he had supposedly committed were read out loud. <clears throat> one by one. How do you ever got into the situation? What are the dudes that get so organized? Casimir Kozlov, for the ten counts of homosexuality, three counts of treason, and one count each of murder, rape, and incest, you are sentenced to death. 
The rascal in the center dresses a judge boom, slamming a makeshift gavel on the table in front of him. He can only uh, gape as the whoops and cheers got louder and louder until he was grabbed by the scruff of his neck by several scrawny henchmen and dragged off the court just as an assortment of fruit began to be pelted at him. Hey, blind put it in handcuffed. <clears throat> uh, the panicking man could only spit out desperate insults, looking for a chance, any chance for them to let go of him so he could make a break for it. Not so cocky now, Otto uh, A familiar voice to his right muttered menacingly. I'll never forget the day you murdered my friends, you effing coward. Casimir groaned as he was shoved to the ground roughly, feeling something sharp gaze his th thighs as he tumbled to the floor. Say hello, a second voice said. To your new home until you die, coward. His blindfold was swiftly removed, and a realization set in quickly as Casimir stared at the pit of cement ahead of him. The former guard who could kill emotionlessly could barely speak coherent sentences as he was reduced to quite the sorry state. Begging for his life and breaking down in tears as he used every last ounce of energy he had to attempt to break free the thieves' iron grip, but to no avail. Please. Please let me go, I'll do anything, I'll swear. I'll be your slave, I'll clean your toilets, I'll do anything, so please don't kill me. His pleas for help were promptly silenced as he dumped into the pit. His final minutes were spent flailing pathetically in the rapidly hardening cement, much to the amusement of the bandits. The poor man would continue to sink deeper and deeper into the pit until all that was left uncovered would be a single hand sticking out of the now solid pool of cement, frozen and unmoving. A fitting end. But I think that's probably where we'll end it for today's first episode. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, a subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. As we'll see what happens when we probably have the power struggle between Izzulani and Usulian. Thanks for watching. Have a great thieving rest of your day.